Okay, welcome to part three in uh, my video tutorial on creating an open GL wallpaper uh, in the Blender and uh, Android. So what we've got here in the Blender is I've just selected a new model and you can create any model you want and texture it any way you want. Texturing it in the Blender uh, is once again outside of the scope of this video, but it, it's pretty easy to find tutorials on how to do that. Uh, creating a model and texturing it uh, using just standard materials okay, is a good idea. And that's all this is. This is just a model that's just got materials mapped to it. Um, this is not the most exciting model in the universe, but uh, it, it will work. I'd like to point out a couple of things here. When you have a model loaded into the Blender, the number of faces counts, okay, I've learned from experience. If you get too high on that count, say more than 10,000, 15,000, the program's going to crash because you're going to overwhelm the memory, okay? So you want to keep your 3D models as, you know, in terms of uh, faces and vertices, you want to keep that within a reasonable range, 2,000 is fine. 5,000, 8,000 is fine, you know, but you don't want to get too high with that. Um, you may want to watch a tutorial on how to decimate a model. If you've got something that just has a lot of faces that you want to use, you can decimate and reduce the number of faces. Uh, that's pretty easy to do. I tend to do that sometimes. Okay, so we've got our model. Let's prep it and get it into the wallpaper. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop into edit mode. I'm going to right click on my model and I'm going to go into edit mode in the blender and I'm going to make sure everything is selected. Up here at the very top right hand corner, okay, I'm going to make this my UV editor. All right, so I'm going to choose UV image editor up here at the top and I'm just going to slide this down a little bit and I'll scroll out a bit and you can see uh, it's got it's got some stuff in there. Um, over on the left, I'm going to click two things, okay? I'm going to click Mark Seam. This is important. Boom. And when you do that, you'll, you'll see the, the physical appearance of the model will change. And then I'm just going to do a straight unwrap. I'm going to click Unwrap and then Unwrap. Now we're going to give that a second, and because there are just not too many faces, it should unwrap. Over on the, the right now, you're going to see, okay, that uh, the UV face has been unwrapped, okay, onto this plane. All right, um, we're going to create an image based on the materials now that are going to basically the materials are now going to drop into all those triangles. So I'm going to choose image and then new image, my UV editor. Okay, just click OK. All right, and if I scroll out now, right now, the image itself by default is black. So if I were to drop this into the wallpaper as is, it would be black. Um, I'm going to click on my camera here under my properties, okay, and if you scroll all the way down, you'll see bake, okay. We're going to bake these materials onto this texture. I'm going to click bake, and the best I have found, you know, depending on your lighting and everything, um, setting, instead of full render, I'm going to choose ambient occlusion. This is the one that has worked the best for me, okay. Uh, and then all you have to do is click bake. All right, now, up at the very top, we're going to see there's a progress bar that's telling us, you know, okay, the texture is baking, all right? And if we watch the UV model over here as it bakes, we're going to see that these uh, triangles begin to fill in with colors from the model. So the textures are now filling in to our image. And we're going to let that finish, all right? Um, I find it's easier to go in and just, you know, color your model using materials or however you like and then bake that to a UV texture. Um, because it's it's simple. It's easier than opening it up in a graphics uh, editor and trying to fill in all those triangles. Okay, so here we are, and you can see that it's finished. Okay, I'm going to go image, and I'm going to choose save, um, save as image, and I'm going to go into my workspace now. Okay, now my workspace is where I have it saved under home here, and I have a workspace called demo workspace, and there's my GL example project, and uh, under, this is a an image now, so I'm going to go into RES and then Drawable. And you can see here's the texture that I had for the tree. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call this building.png just so I can show you in the program where to change that. Okay, And I'm going to click Save and now I've got my image saved. Now there's a trick to this. All right, uh, Inside of the GIMP or any graphical editor, we now have to open this image that we've created in order for this to work with this uh, project that I have. So I'm going to choose File Open, all right, and I'm now going to open 
what has just been generated in the GIMP. In order for this to work, we have to flip it over. All right. I'm going to choose image, transform, and I'm going to flip this thing vertically. Boom. So now the image has been flipped uh, vertically. All right. 180 degrees. File, save. All right. So I've generated, I have baked materials to an image. I've opened the image up in a graphics editor and I flipped it over. All right. You have to do that for this project to work. All right, so now that I flipped it over, we're in good shape. Uh, let's go to our project space here. No, let's export the model. Let's do that too. So I'm going to go File, and now I'm going to choose Export. We're going to export an OBJ file, all right? And I'm going to go into my workspace again, the workspace I have set up, all right? And uh, it's going to be GL Example, and our object goes into the Assets folder here. All right, and you can see I've already done a practice run on this. So I'm just going to call this mc.obj. Now this is important over here on the left. You have to have certain things checked. We need to include the normals. You need to triangulate faces. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and keep vertex order. So take a look at what I have there. Those check boxes when you export the obj file, if you miss one, it won't run because it won't export the file correctly. All an obj file is is a series of coordinates that have been written in a certain way. So by checking those boxes, it's going to generate an OBJ file, which is a text file, and it'll do it correctly. Uh, I'm going to export this OBJ file. OK. And uh, now let's go into our, our program, all right? And let's make the texture work first. So I'm going to open up FileTexture.java, all right? And right down here, where it says load texture, the only thing we need to change here is r.drawable.texture. That's going to be the first part of our new texture. And in this case, it's called building. All right. And it will remain blue. All right. In just a second, as soon as I save it. All right. It's going to go through and it's going to find, oh, hey, there's a new building.png in my drawable folder. That's a resource. We can use it. Okay. So now building is, is set up there in our file texture.java. That's the first part. And inside of glmodel.java, all right. I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to find out where the tree is, all right? And I'm just going to use Control-F to help me here. Control-F, and I'm going to search for the word tree, and it's in quotation marks, okay, right there. And I'm just going to change that to the new object, mc.obj, and I'm going to save it, all right? Might be a good idea to clean your project at this point. I'm going to go Project, and I'm going to choose Clean. All right, and I'm going to clean GL example, and that's going to go through, and it's going to refresh everything and make sure that it understands what has been changed on the disk versus what we have, you know, in our workspace. Okay, and then if I go right-click, run as Android application, okay, and we let that process for a couple of seconds. Inside of um, this, you know, it doesn't look so great in the emulator. Things definitely look better on a hardware device. Uh, we have, you know, our McDonald's building that has been textured correctly. You can do this with any 3D model. So that's part three. Um, you know, just I'll go into one extra step here. Inside of OpenGL Renderer, okay, uh, if you want to go into where it says on draw frame, this is where I'm doing all of my drawing. And right now it's just rotating at a value of angle and that is being incremented by 0.4. Uh, every time a new frame is generated. So you can go in, for example, if you want to make the building further away, that would be the translate F, negative 17. If I were to change that to something like negative 37, the building would appear to be further away from us. But once again, working with OpenGL and uh, translating and rotating is beyond the scope, really, of this lesson. This is just about getting models into an OpenGL wallpaper. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you're able to do it, and thank you for watching.